Afternoon folks, good to have you with us again today. Um, I'm not sure what you make of this here. Uh, they've changed a lot over the years. I'll give you a moment or two to try to guess what it is. I don't think any of our younger viewers uh, will pick it up straight away, but some of the older folk might. Uh, it's an old brass fire extinguisher. And there's a nice brass plate in the front here that explains how to operate it and explains as well where it was made. The L and G carbon tetrachloride hand pump type fire extinguisher. LNG Fire Appliance Company Limited, uh, Vauxhall Road, Liverpool, London Road, Glasgow, Caxton Street North, London, also at Newcastle, Birmingham, Cardiff, Southampton, Aberdeen, and also Belfast. There's a little warning there, and then it says one quart size. This extinguisher is guaranteed to comply with the FOC specification for public service vehicles made to BS721 in 1959 listed by the MOT for use on ships so there it is an old-fashioned uh, fire extinguisher and it, it's a bit stiff here but you're supposed to pump it back and forward and there it is a fire extinguisher to put out the fires but a very solemn lesson from this simple fire extinguisher used to be a preacher many years ago called Vance Havner he was preaching in a church in America, a very respectable church, and he was speaking on the subject of hell, condemnation, and judgment, exhorting people to come to Christ and turn from their sin and put their faith and trust in the Savior. At the end of the meeting, a very respectable looking lady came and took him by the hand. She shook his hand. She squeezed it hard. She was annoyed. She was irate. She says, Mr. Havner, why couldn't you come to our church? And speak upon the meek and lowly Jesus, for example, rather than that awful subject of hell. Mr. Havner was a quick thinker. He didn't let go of her hand, but he said, Madam, it was from the lips of the meek and lowly Jesus that I got all of my information about hell. Now, there's no doubt today that the Son of God is meek and lowly. He exhorts us, come on to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. The Son of God certainly is meek and lowly, but he's also full of grace and truth. He was a man of strong cryings and tears. He was a man who lifted up his voice like a trumpet and showed the people their sins. And he was also a man who, yes, spoke about heaven. You can read about that in John 14. But on average, somebody worked it out for every sermon that the Savior preached on heaven. On average, he preached 13 sermons about hell. He described hell as being a literal place. You read Luke's Gospel, chapter 16. He speaks there about this place of torment. The word there for place is the Greek word topos, which means a literal place, a real place, topos. The same word is used for heaven, the Father's house. I go to prepare a place for you. Topos, it's a literal place. And the Son of God describes it as being a place of separation, a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, a place of outer darkness, a place of separation from the Lord. But he also described it as being a place of unquenchable fire, a place where the fire is never put out, a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Listen to what the Son of God says. I'm just going to read a, a verse or two for you from the Gospel of Mark. These are the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord himself. He said, If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than to having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Those are solemn words. And the Son of God is saying, regardless of the cost to yourself, 
Regardless of the pain it might inflict upon you, if something causes you to offend, if it causes you to sin, if it leads you away from God, cut it off, pluck it out, get rid of it, throw it away, rather than enter into a lost eternity, rather than enter into hell itself. Sometimes it's costly to come to Christ. There are things that we might have to let go of, sins that, of course, we have to give up, habits that we might have to renounce, friendships perhaps even, that might have to be dissolved, places that we frequent that we might have to refuse to go back to, things that offend. If something causes us to sin, the Lord says, pluck it out, cut it off, cast it away, rather than enter into hell itself, where the worm dieth not, And the fire is not quenched. Leonard Ravenhill said, hell has no exits. And that's true. The fire will never be put out. Hell is eternal. It's everlasting. It's forever. There's a hell for every sinner outside of Christ. But listeners of Christ, for every sinner outside of hell, for all who will come, there's a saviour from all sin who can cleanse you, who can save you, who can forgive you. Give me your heart. Give me your life today. Repent. Turn from your sin and trust in Jesus Christ. God bless you, friends. Thank you for listening today.